for me and and indeed for the Social Democrats this week, um, the the drop in home ownership, um, you know, it's now down to sixty six percent. And if you look back a, a few years, you know, it was eighty percent in in the nineties. So we're seeing this continual drop in home ownership, particularly amongst those in the you know twenty five to thirty four age group. And I think that's something that's really concerning because it's becoming less and less likely that people are going to be able to have their own home and that security. And Social Democrats this week had a motion actually on home ownership to bring the issue to the floor of the doll so we yeah, can have do, a discussion. I mean, um, the government, uh, you know, and Sinn Féin <laughs> particularly will be hammering away at the government on housing. But, you know, if it could be done quickly, it would be done because they're looking at the next election looming, Lynn, and they're yeah. saying, God, if we could get this housing thing sorted out, uh, we might have a better chance of returning in some shape or, or fashion to power. You so think, the fact that they're you? not doing it <laughs> means it might be not doable. I, I, I don't agree. I think what we've seen is Fianna Gael in government for 12 years. Uh, Fianna Fáil have propped them up in the last government are now in government with them. Um, and they are introducing policies that don't work. So that so-called uh, help to buy scheme, the controversial shared equity scheme. They're all things that are actually pushing up the cost of housing for people. We see rent increasing, um, you know, and, and the, the census results are interesting in terms of home ownership. But also there was a euro found study out this week as well that showed that Ireland's the worst performer in terms of young people having to stay living at no, home. No, we're not. We well, had the biggest increase. Biggest that, that's an important thing to say. Yeah, we're, we're, one of there, seven there are worst other perf- Croatia, I think they'd stay there till their pensioners nearly <laughs> living with their mammy and daddy. Yeah, but we're one of seven worst performers, but we did have the largest increase. But I mean, the, the, so the, you would think that the government would act on housing, but all of the measures they've taken to date are failing. Yeah, I think it's interesting because, you know, obviously when we were preparing for the motion this week, we were looking through different stats and 82% of the planning permissions for Dublin City uh, last year were, were, or since uh, 2018, were built to rent. So only 15% uh, were actually, you know, to, to purchase, which so you can see how government policy is actually creating this environment where it is harder and harder for people to buy. And what's happening, actually, Catherine Murphy made this point. What's happening is if you want to buy your own home now and you're in Dublin City, you're actually moving to the suburbs or you're moving to places like Wicklow, Kildare yeah. or Meath. The, pro- the, pro- no. the problem we have is that in, in the opposition parties talk about home ownership, but every intervention Dara O'Brien makes to strengthen home ownership is opposed. So Lynn mentioned help to buy 37,000 people have availed um, of that. 37,000 homes have been purchased through Help to Buy. First Home Scheme, which the two opposition parties, Sinn Féin and Social Democrats, opposed the First Home Scheme, which brings affordability, bridges the gap for many uh, young couples who want to own their home. If you look at the last uh, uh, year, in 2022, um, uh, 25,000 of of 52,000 transactions in housing, 25,000 were were first-time buyers. So over 400 uh, transactions per week were first-time buyers. People are um, seeing a pathway to home ownership. We have a lot more to do, and I uh, agree with my colleagues on this. We we need to strengthen that. And um, but now, every, now rules every, have been brought in to stop um, the the buying up of entire estates. I mean, people pay more tax if they buy uh, up entire estates. But I'm I'm just wondering and. Uh, When I hear the construction industry uh, bleating about how expensive it is to build apartment blocks in this country, why it should be dearer here than it is in Northern Ireland or in Scotland or whatever, is another question. But I'm wondering, is this business of renting these apartments rather than selling them because the price they would have to ask for a sale would be so unaffordable that people but, wouldn't buy them. Well, I think they know they can make an awful lot of money in renting and they will, they hold yeah, on no, to their an assets. An eternal income stream. An eternal income stream. Uh, and when you look at, say, the the, the sort of vehicles like the uh, REITs and stuff, that, like the tax treatment that they get is really favourable. So I think if you're coming at this purely from a business perspective, which they are, that is the best way to make money, you know, to build, to rent. Standards are lower. Um, you know, so costs mm. will be lower to build them. So, I mean, that that's, a, uh, I suppose, a, a, a policy decision of government. I think that that's a, a difficulty that we're seeing now that we, people can't actually buy these houses. But, you know, one of the things that Jack was talking about there, like it, it's all very well for government to come out with these policies. But if they fundamentally push up prices, which mm. is exactly what the government's policies are doing, like that's not going to address our issues. We need affordable housing and we don't have affordable yeah, housing no, and we no, don't have affordable housing then, because government yeah, keep on no, putting uh, money uh, into developers pockets. Affordability is key and when, and when Jack quoted the figures on the you know the so-called help to buy scheme, 40% of the people who availed of that and that was their right to avail of it because it's government incentive 
did not need that. They already had the deposit to buy the house. So what we're seeing is they're, they are pushing up the prices. And the issue here is affordability. And it's not just about home ownership. Some people will choose they never want to own their own home. They are happy to rent, but they have to have affordable rents. So affordability is the crux of everything. Do you mean? And, and the bill to rent, yes, they're lower standards. So people aren't going to stay there. They're not going to stay there long term in those scheme. apartments, Jack. And you know that yeah. if you don't have storage, we, if you don't have dual aspect, you're not going to spend, you're not going to be, live in a bill to rent apartment and say, this is where I'm going to stay for the rest of my life. You see, this yeah. is classic uh, opposition politics talking about the problem, but very few solutions being put on the table. And when solutions are put on the table, um, they're constantly being opposed. We have an opposition that opposes every affordable measure being introduced by government. No, but the first no, but just Jackie, some of the points that Lynn made are, are, we need, we are need valid. Some, for, for instance, lower standards for building we, to rent, not acceptable. I'm sorry, I build properly or don't build at all. Um, the, the second thing is lack of storage. We don't build apartments here for whatever reason, I think it's down to the developers and the planners who allow them to do this, where you you have no place to put a suitcase except perhaps under the bed. I mean, that kind of trying to design rental properties for family living is simply not done by our development uh, developer cast. We need a class. Greater, we need a greater mix of. Um, of oh, well, we of, need. But well, you guys can actually we change need. the planning. You can insist that these are livable apartments. And I've, I've never understood the reluctance of so many consecutive housing ministers uh, that they don't insist upon this. Now, the, the, it may mean that the, you know, the, the apartment costs more to build. We've so a, what? We've a, we've it's a complete, there for a lifetime. We have a complete undersupply of apartments um, and very few are being built uh, when you took at the overall I, pipeline. I don't, I don't pipeline. know if, I don't know over, if that's true, Jack. There was, six, of supply, there was only have, 136 you're talk, you're talking about planning houses. Permissions. You're talking about planning permissions but, yeah but the uh, but an, an, an actual construction there there is a there's an under provision of a whole range of, of housing types so for example we are trying to and the biggest actor now in this is, is the state itself 10,000 um, social homes delivered last year of, in the context of 30,000 uh, delivered and the overall issue is supply and we have we have lots of it's uh, affordability, Jack, uh, it's and you supply, have to accept but, that. But we had we had oversupply during mm. the Celtic Tiger and we didn't have affordability. Oh, no, we did. Uh, hang on we a second. Did not after, have after the collapse. After, uh, the, after collapse. the collapse, yeah. yes. But during what, what we did property building, sell for? We were Lynn, what did property sell for? When we were building, we were building up you to 90,000 houses, you needed cash then to buy. we had affordability. Mm. Jim, we didn't have affordability when we were building lots mm. of houses no, in the Celtic Tiger. The point I was trying to make is when we had a surfeit after the collapse of the Celtic Tiger, you had loads of people trying to get rid of properties. The price fell. If no, we could we, jack up supply, the builders would have to be competitive with each other, which they don't yeah, have to but, be now. But the, the, the supply that they're creating is the wrong supply. So just, you know, when, when you look at Dublin City, there was only planning permissions for 136 houses last year. 136 mm. out of 6,290 planning permissions. So 2% were actually for houses. So if you want to own your own home but and you don't want to live are, in an apartment because, many. well, actually, because most of the time you can't buy an apartment because they're built to rent. So if you want to own your own home and you're in Dublin City, it's not a, it's not a possibility. Are you talking about DCC area? Yeah, in, in now, Dublin. That is and, at and the heart of urban Dublin. Now, yeah. you're not. That's and you would be authorities. insane if you tried to build uh, houses with front gardens and back gardens in the, the urban capital uh, that is Dublin. That but is as, crazy. But as well as that, though, the majority, 82%, are built to rent. So even if you mm. wanted to live in an apartment and buy it and have your family there, you can't because they are not for Which sale. Which then has knock-on impacts on yeah. our emissions <laughs> yeah. because people are having to move out. Are being pushed out. And, out. and yeah. we, we're having huge um, development in Wicklow at the moment, an awful lot of houses, but then we don't have the infrastructure to keep up with it. So we don't have the public transport, we don't have the schools. There's all these knock-on issues. And, you know, Catherine Murphy described it as a donut. Essentially, the government policy is creating a donut where you have a decrease in population in Dublin city centre uh, and, and moving out and then all those you know an increase in me but you're Kildare referencing permissions in yeah. Dublin you're referencing permissions in Dublin city centre which will obviously enhance the population no there, because so, no what so I'm what saying you, no those permissions are actually built to rent so if you want to own your own home that is not a possibility. Are, eighty-two, many, per, one eighty-two one of, percent of the planning, planning permissions but, you but can't ever are, buy. The, one of the wider issues is that there it's the commencement of the existing planning permissions which is a challenge and actually getting those commenced. So some of them getting planning so there's a, there's historic planning commissions which will allow for homes to, homes for purchase that haven't been commenced and that's a wider challenge. No, but there's nothing to stop them selling the whole block um, mm. to to a, a fund. I mean, one of the blocks near me was sold to Irish Life, not even, you know, a foreign vulture fund. And every apartment is up for rent when initially 
when the planning was sought, it appeared they were all going to be mm. sold individually. Mm. Suddenly, the designation changes. Yeah, no, and that that is a that 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 is I know a concern of, of for people that are living beside. I mean, we, we've addressed that in the context of housing estates, and um, but there is a wider issue on when it comes to finance as well, um, and the, I mean the construction of apartments. And part of what Minister O'Brien tried to do with the development levies is to try and give greater certainty around cost in, in terms of apartment building, actually getting units and and supply. No, but the, the whole idea that if you get planning permission and you shouldn't get it unless there is an electrical connection, a water connection, a sewage connection, you shouldn't even be given planning permission. Permission on, unless that's in place but we don't do that we give them planning permission and then they say I'm sorry I can't build this because mm-hmm. I can't get uh, you know an el- electricity supply and I can't get sewage therefore I'm not going to build it and nominally all these houses are fit to be built why not well first of all sort out the planning so that they don't get permission for things they can't build and secondly part of that either is, use it or, or lose, lose it, it. Yes, exactly. part of that exactly. is, in the, is in the zoning that local authorities uh, I think they have they have there's a much better process now with local authorities in the in the creation of their local development plans around to having service sites and actually focusing a development where there is service which sites. on board panola with, as with, you know has utilities. ignored uh, traditionally that, i think that, that might so be some there reform is, there but they yeah. drove coach and forth through local but there is, authority it's, development it's, plans it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a much more focused structure now than than it had been historically and people would know that who served on local authorities that service sites are where the emphasis is so that if something is zoned for housing that it can be developed um when when it receives permission. now the the government's plans at the moment uh, are when land is zoned for residential that either you use it for development and do it quickly or you pay a tax. Um, so a farmer who finds himself zoned by the local council and doesn't want to build, wants to keep his dairy herd until the Greens tell him to call it, um, he says, I want to stay as a farmer. And then he's got to pay a tax so or else being, get his land dezoned. So that's being that's being addressed and uh, Minister O'Brien is, uh, is working on addressing that anomaly in the in the in the taxation code with, with Minister McGrath um, so that no, what I'm saying is that the, quite a radical approach to, to land uh, use there and why not have the same approach mm. to uh, planning permissions that are not built well, look, we, uh, we, you know, we, we, we'll we, tax you out of it or you have yeah, to sell it yeah. to somebody who is going to build we, it. We, we introduced this as a as a measure to try and incentivise the use of land and to make sure that zoned land is mobilised. And, and obviously that's that's something the Department of Finance led on.